you know, when you, you get on your homestead, folks, one of the biggest misconceptions that I see as far as wasting a lot of resources, meaning money, uh, you just burn through a ton of money, and that is building a barn. Um, you don't know how many farms I go on to. I do consulting in all the United States, and they've got these big barns, got all these stalls and areas to calve in and all these fancy gates, and I'm like, oh, what did you spend on that? You know, people call mega shops, whatever. I don't care. It's a waste of money. Those beef cattle didn't ask you to do that. Those sheep didn't ask you to build that. Why are you doing that for? It's stupid. Animals don't do well inside. They need to be outside in the sun, the snow, the wind, the rain, whatever. They need to be outside. Um, if you're calving in the wintertime, why, why are you doing that? That's why they build them. A lot of people build these barns so they can calve in the wintertime. Well, that's absolutely ridiculous. You don't see a deer dropping a fawn in a snowbank. It doesn't happen. And as long as you're fighting Mother Nature, folks, at the end of the day, you will lose. And that's because you don't live long enough to whip Mother Nature. You've got to uh, manage your farm in sync with Mother Nature. And that's when things all start to fall together. Um, so the barn goes. You just don't build a barn. That's ridiculous. Um, Gabe Brown, good example, up in uh, Bismarck. He didn't have a barn. He's in North Dakota, 45 below, three to four foot of snow, and the cows are out there in it. They grow winter hair coat. If you put them up in a barn, here's what happens. They're big animals, okay? They weigh 1,000 pounds, and they all get together in that barn. They get hot in the wintertime. Well, then they go out to get a drink. Boom. There you go. You got pneumonia. Hot, cold, hot, cold. You don't do that. Leave them outside. You shouldn't have any baby calves. Oh, you got to have the barn for the baby calf. No, you don't. The baby calf uh, in the springtime does fine on spring pasture. So barns are a big, big waste of money. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go down that road. And the other thing uh, is uh, corral systems. Don't go overboard on corral systems. We're going to go over that. I see so many people spend a ton of money, you know, like $20,000, $25,000 just for a head catch in an alley. That's it. Then they got to build the rest of the crowd to catch the darn things. When you start moving your animals and you get your animals tame, folks, you don't need something that looks like Fort Knox. You just don't need it because they're, they're not going to be putting that kind of pressure. If you got cows that are bouncing off the side of your corral, that's you. That's your fault. First of all, you bought wild animals or you're handling them too quickly. You're running it. You're getting them running. You should never have animals running in a crowd. And I'm, while we're covering that, don't run after your animals, ever. You never run after an animal. If they beat you to the gate or the fence and you didn't cut them off, let them go. You can go back and get them and walk them back up. But if you start chasing them, you're going to have a wreck. Somebody's going to get hurt. They're going to run over you because they're, they're going to get away from you. They're all going to get fired up, and now you've got a whole bunch of them. You don't want to do that. You've got this acreage, and you know it's got a lot of open pasture on it, but it doesn't have any trees. And it's going to reach 90 to 97, 100, maybe 105 degrees in the, you know, July, August. What do you do? Uh, are you going to leave them out there and let them cook? Um, first of all, let's cover that. So heat. A red-hatted animal versus a black hat an animal in extreme summer heat. They did a study in Gillette, Wyoming. The ambient temperature was 105. The red hat an animal, they, they put a thermometer on its back and measured it, one of these stickies. They stick it on the back and measure it. Uh, the red hat animal is 108. The black hat animal is 138. That's a big difference. So if you live where there's a lot of summer heat, why would you have black cattle? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, just go with red. That's going to help you a ton. But there's also on a small acreage, folks, where you got a, just a small homestead, build you a, a metal frame that slides. Think of it as a sleigh, like a sleigh in the snow. It's just got the, the round pipes on each side. And it could be 8 or 10 feet wide by 12 feet long and just put a little chain on it that you can grab a hold of either pull by hand or you can pull it with your pickup or lawnmower or four-wheeler or whatever. And put a shade cloth on it. In other words, have a rack up on the top. Have it high enough that the cattle can't reach the shade cloth. They can walk under that. That is a heck of a tool. 
uh, the, the animals can keep the 100 degree t temperatures off of them. And that's where your manure and urine will be. So you can move that shade, we call it shade mobile. You can move that shade mobile around your various pasture on your small homestead. And if you don't have any trees, they're still going to be comfortable. Because see, when cows get up to 100 degrees, their internal organs are at that temperature. They don't feel like eating. And so you're not, you're not going to be making any money. They're not going to put on any weight. Worse than that, cows that are pregnant and get extreme temperatures, uh, they can slip the calf. Yeah, especially black ones. Black cows are more prone to do it than white ones. Calf will come out. They just got too darn hot. They aborted it. So shade, shade is, I think, an issue where you have a lot of heat. If I was up north, you know, I was just in Canada. It gets hot up there, too. Uh, some of those places would have been nice to have some shade.